So one question I have is uh, people who are making their money, you know, and they're saving their money and they're doing what they should do to make even more money. Um, why is it important for them to consider gold and other assets? Um, okay. Well, so you can say it's important for people to consider other assets because, you know, Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get nitty gritty. I'm going to okay. go through actual philosophies. Okay. But we have to go through a social studies class, sociology. Um, in America, and in general, probably in most developed and even undeveloped countries and societies, you have two primary groups, socioeconomic groups. <coughs> socioeconomic means social, as in interacting. Economic means having to do with value and money. Mix them together, socioeconomics. These two groups are capitalist class and working class. Okay, Capitalist class are those who survive off of their capital their actual financial capital, okay? Working class are those who survive by doing what? Working. Working. That means that they use their hands, plumbers, carpenters, janitors, etc., or they might use intellectual labor versus physical labor. Accountants, lawyers, doctors, um, engineers, etc. But the one thing that those doctors, lawyers, engineers, or plumbers, mechanics and carpenters, the one thing they have in common is they rely upon their labor, right, to get paid. These two groups um, think and act very differently because of how they survive, how they make money. Um, capitalist class, the members of the capitalist class, or the membership of the capitalist class is much, much smaller than the membership of the working class, and it needs to be that way. So you just say you have 1%. This is a number that's going out in the media a lot, the top 1%. Not quite accurate, but we're going to run with that. So you have 1% in the capitalist class, you have 99% in the working class. And that is needed because that 99% of the working class has to support that 1%. Now, out of that 90% 90, 90 of the working class, a lot of the members of that working class right, would be offended if they were called working class um, for, I guess, reasons that they were taught. Um, I don't want to get into you know, whether you should be a friend or should be not. But the definition of working class is very, very easy to define, which you just came up with yourself. You have to get up in the morning and ask yourself whether you're working class. Well, you can answer that question by deciding where you're going in the morning. If you're going anywhere called work, you're a member of the working class, okay? Now, that doesn't mean that capitalist class doesn't work, but the difference is the capitalist class survives and subsists on their own capital. They use capital to make more capital and to make money. The working class subsists on their own labor. So if you have to labor, right, to support yourself, then you're a member of the working class, and the working class can be split up into, you know, the other social, socioeconomic classes. Um, upper middle class, middle class, working class, which is a misnomer, or, you know, the working poor, the poor, etc. But those are just um, gradations of the people who have to get up and walk and work. Now, I say this because each member of the class, um, they save, and they invest, and they work differently. Um, one way to become a member of the capitalist class is to take a guess. Tell me. You said the working class. No, a member to become a member of the capitalist class. To gain capital. Exactly. Okay. Once you gain capital, then you're a member of the capitalist class. The key is uh, capital, I call it money or capital is what? What is the definition of money? It's something you use in order to get access to goods or services. That is, uh, and with all due respect, people get offended, right? right? Like that that is a working class definition of money. Okay. Now, the capitalist class definition of money or capital is a proxy for labor. So basically, capital or money is what you use to replace your labor. Now, of course, if you don't have a lot of capital or money, you have to labor because, you know, you have to eat, you need a shelter, etc. If you, you are able to work past the point where you don't need to work in order to shelter yourself or eat, that means you're putting your, your money away or your capital away. I'm interchanging money and capital for right now. You're putting your capital away, and then you get, you get to the point where the capital equals your labor. Then you're at an equilibrium point, and that equilibrium point is when you or at the verge of moving from the working class to the capitalist class, or vice versa. 
where a member of the capitalist class has dwindled their capital to the point where they have to work to replenish it to survive, then they fall from or move from, I don't know, fall, because it's not like one is on top or on the bottom, it all depends how you, quantify, how you qualify it, but you move from the capitalist class to the working class, or working class to the capitalist class. Now, <clears throat> using the definition that you just uh, gave me, if you use your capital to acquire products and services, okay, then you're spending your capital, right? Members of the capitalist class, it's anathema to spend your capital. Because if you spend your capital, you no longer have your capital, capital yeah. right? That means you gave it to yourself, gave it to somebody else. If I was a member of the capitalist class, my goal is to get you to what? Give you, give you my capital. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And now, if you're a member of the working class, your goal should be what? For you to give me capital. Right. Yeah. Okay. Once I give it to you, you keep it. But members of the working class are taught in school, in employment, and basically everywhere. You have to give your capital to the capitalist class. Right? When you're given money, you say, I want to get the newest iPhone. I need to get the new Yeezys. I have to get this Benz. I want to get this place to stay, which is way above utility, which you don't really need. Uh, you know, those clothes look good, etc. Every time you make that purchase, you enrich your capitalist class. The owners of the machine and the plant and the businesses, right, that peddle these things, and you get something in return, satisfaction, happiness, whatever you may get. So you see the switch. Capital goes one way, labor goes the other way. If you have to work and labor to do these things, then you know you are dwindling your capital and using your labor to attempt to replace it. Now, if you purchase these objects by giving your capital away, but you level that purchase by borrowing money credit cards, student loans, automobile loans, etc. Now you're giving your capital away at an accelerated pace, right, for products and services. That accelerated pace of capital um, dissipation benefits who? The capitalist. Right. And it works to the detriment of? The working class. Exactly. The rich get richer, the poor get poorer. Okay? Only by mindset. The major difference between capitalist class and working class Almost the only difference is mindset, but that's not what everybody's taught. They taught it. It's money, it's you know schooling, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, a lot of members of the academic community will have a fit um, if they knew how I thought. But uh, most academic schooling does not teach you how to become a capitalist. It is designed by you know definition and by historic performance to teach you how to become a worker. Exactly, and. That's Mosaki because the schooling system was designed by? The capitalists. For? The capitalists. Right. To benefit. The capitalists, right. See? That's yeah. Or the capitalist you, system. Yeah. Right. So you, you have it down. So a lot of you say, well, but I have a, um, a law degree. I have a master's degree. And I have a PhD. Yes, you do. So now you're a higher level worker. To benefit? The capitalists. Exactly. Okay, you look at the top capitalists in the world, the top. Go to the Forbes 400 list, look at the top five there. 80% of them dropped out of school. Okay, so all the uh, academic guys, come and get me. Let's dance. <laughs> <laughs> Let's dance. You know where he is. <laughs> okay, you know where I am. <laughs> um, so <clears throat> my follow-up question to that is, because I was very educational. You know, um, and I never did answer your question, did I? You, did. you, you would give a follow-up question. You let me get away with not answering the first yeah, question. Because I'm, I'm, I was very uh, intrigued by what you were just okay. saying. But go ahead. So the first question is, um, how can somebody, why should somebody bother buying gold or silver, etc.? Well, it helps you become a member of the capitalist class. The members of the capitalist class, they invest heavily. Um, they don't save that much. The reason is because you can go broke saving. But that's not what's taught to the working class. Right. So the working class is taught to save. Best case scenario, saving puts a lot of capital in banks at a very, very low rate of return. Who owns banks? The capitalists. And so when you put a lot of money in your banks and the banks have to pay you a small amount, what can they now do? Gain more capital. To do? It's getting harder now. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Then think it through. I'm just, I want you to think it through. To offer more loans and 
right. to, to more people. And, right. Yeah. And when you offer the loans, what rates do they offer the loans at? At a low rate. No. They offer the loans at a, a high rate. If you owned a if you owned a bank and I was giving you this gold, I said you can have this gold for one percent per year. And I gave you a hundred thousand other pieces of gold at one percent per year, what would you do with that gold? Knowing that you had to pay one percent per year on it, what would you do? I guess I would spend it. You'd spend it? As yeah. a member of the working class, okay? Yeah. Now, as a capital class, I'm taking the loan, you know. Right. As a capitalist class, look around, look across the street. You see that scaffolding? Yeah. And we're in New York, so the only reason you can't see forty-five cranes is because there's a building right in front of us. But there are cranes everywhere. Those cranes are developers and speculators who are building real estate assets. Okay, how do they get, how do they build it? Where do they get the money to put all these buildings up? From the working class. Uh, through, from the working class. It is class, getting more complicated. From, from the working class. Through the banks. Through the banks. Yeah. From loans that those banks got from savings and checkings that they pay less than 1% for right now. Mm -hmm. So I get a 70 basis point at 1% money, which is close to free. I now loan it out to these developers to people buying cars and school loans at five, six, seven, eight percent. Now I get a spread of six, seven percent on all this money that I didn't even work for. So that's almost free money. So when you get one percent gold, you don't spend it, you turn around and you loan out somebody for seven percent. And you catch that six percent spread. You do that all day, every day. All day, every day. That's why banks are some of the most powerful industries in developed nations. So they're doing this. this they're doing this at scale, basically, and right. the amount of people that they're gaining interest from right. allows them to build capital. Even if you didn't do that scale, suppose you just did it once off, okay? Versus spending the money, you would spend the gold. Somebody else would just loan it at six percent. This time next year, who's wealthier? They they'd be wealthy. As a matter of fact, this time tomorrow afternoon, who's wealthier? They'd be wealthier. As a matter of fact, immediately, <laughs> who's wealthy? I guess they are, yeah, right away, because it's just the nature of the transaction. Right. One is giving out money, one is taking in. Now, Veritasium allows everybody to become their sovereign self. Sovereign money, sovereign capital, a sovereign self. You could become your own banker, your own exchange, your own investment fund. You have control over all your capital. So, as a member, a millennial, which I'm assuming you are, right? Yeah. You can now take a lot of this investment um, effort upon yourself. You take education, such as the research available from the app, with the ability to buy things, which is available through the app, and you can buy things that don't decrease in value, but increase in value. Gold, as Abby and Episode was saying, um, if you go back 100 years, one gram of gold, which you could also buy from the app, it's a little chunk about one half inch by one half inch. One gram of gold would buy you five loaves of bread. Okay? At the same time, a dollar would probably buy you about five loaves of bread. Okay? Fast forward 100 years in the future, one gram of gold is about $48 or so. Still so buys you five loaves of bread plus. You could go to an expensive place like Whole Page, I mean, not Whole Page, like Whole Whole Foods. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just making enemies all over the place. This is, this I'm joking, man. It's a new, no, Mr. Bezos. It's a, new, it's a business venture right there. <laughs> Whole Page. So um, you go to Whole Foods. By the way, I think he's been dropping prices. That was a joke, okay? Um, you go to Whole Foods and where they charge premium prices for premium products, but $5 a loaf of bread sounds about reasonable Whole Foods. One gram of $48 buys you six. Not five, five, five and a half, okay? One dollar buys you how many loaves of bread at Whole Foods? Hopefully one, but that's if you have no, a you're not, There's yeah. nothing at Whole Foods that costs a dollar, I can yeah. tell you that now. Um, one dollar will get you, well, if you use sesame seed loaves, it'll get you like six of the sesame seeds on the top of one of those loaves. Wow. Okay? Wow. Maybe more than six, but you, you, you get my point. I hear the you. reason is because, right, gold seems like it's went up in price relative to the dollar over 100 years. But that's not what happened. What actually happened was the dollar dropped. And it dropped significantly. Um, let's go through how that works. Okay. There's a couple of obvious reasons. 
go down. Okay? Which one seems like it's more valuable just from its makeup? If I were to just glance at it, I would say the dollar. Why? Because I'm used to what money looks like. That's what money looks like to me, what value looks like. Take, take the dollar. That's what money and value looks like to you. Yeah. Okay? So, what is money again? Money is... Uh, capital? Capital. Capital. Capital money. What is it? The, the definition I gave you. Do you remember? No, I don't. It's a proxy for labor. Gotcha. I'll be pretty.